The theory of rasa gave Indian ascetics an entirely new orientation. After the learned and powerful exposition of this theory in Ananda Vardhana's Dvanya Loka, it once and for all settled the path to be followed in literary criticism. The concept of dhvani evolved out of the grammatical and logical discussions of the relation between word and meaning. Words have three types of meanings. First one is the primary literal meaning. It is fixed arbitrarily by convention. And the next is the secondary meaning which is derived from the context in which it is used. And third is a tertiary meaning. It is suggested by the primary or secondary meanings. The essence of the poetry is not what is directly expressed, but what is indirectly suggested. All poets find out directions by indirections, you know, use of metaphor, paradox, hyperbole, and other figures of speech. Rasa in a poem is a qualitatively new product arising from a combination of vibhavas. Rasa is not in any one of the ingredients but a product of their proper functioning. It is a quality which appears when the vibhavas etc. begin to function. The suggested meaning will not become comprehensible if the referential and contextual meanings do not function. But in poetry, uh, the latter, that is the contextual meaning, must be taken as a means to an end. As the Lamb analogy makes it clear. In poetry, um, means and ends coexist. We secure a lamp not to look at it, but to look at other objects in its light. The primary meaning of words are fixed by convention, but the suggested meaning are accessible only to men with trained poetic sensibility. What the tertiary power of words suggest in poetry is nothing but rasa. By its very nature, rasa can only be suggested and cannot be explicitly stated. Poetry depends on the suggestions, you know, the, the suggestive power of words that it cannot be uh, paraphrased or translated in the same language. All poetry is suggestive, but all suggestion is not poetry. The poet may suggest only the rise or fall of a mood. He may suggest an object or a figure of speech. But the suggestion of moods, objects and figures of speech will ultimately terminate in the experience of rasa. Thwani also stands for the suggesting words, the suggested meanings, the function of suggestion, the suggested experience and the poem which it suggests. When we relish poetry, we apprehend meanings in terms of experience. Rasa Dhwani, the suggestion of rasa or the suggested rasa is the soul of poetry. So that's all for today. Um, it will take one more part to complete the theory of Rasa. This is part 3 of the class 47. Uh, hope you are enjoying the classes. I will wind up the theory of Rasa with next part. But today we are winding up the phrasal verbs. So, uh, at the end of this session, I am providing some questions regarding phrasal verbs and we will wind up the classes dealing with phrasal verbs. So, uh, try to do all these 
questions and I'm providing the answers in the description box. Check it out only after trying it for yourself. So in the next class, we will uh, start with another subject in module 7, basic grammar. Thank you all. Stay safe. Bye.